God bless you. God bless you. Listen here. Welcome back to Word on a Wednesday here at New Heart Christian Center. We welcome our Facebook family, also our YouTube family, our church family abroad. Amen. We welcome you back. We do believe that God has a blessing in store for you, and we are just excited about what God has to say to us. Amen. We bring Word on Wednesday to you from none other than our leader, our pastor, Bishop, Dr. George Eddie Butt Sr., and also our co-pastor, First Lady Supervisor of Women, Kathy Butt. Amen. We're thankful for the lead, our leaders. We're thankful for their anointing. Amen. And we're thankful for entrusting us. Amen. Um, to do this work of ministry. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for everyone that is watching at this time. Father, we ask tonight that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. Lord, open your word up tonight. Open up your revelation tonight and we will give you glory. We will give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, welcome back to Word on Wednesday, uh, brought to you by our pastor, Bishop George Eddie Butts Sr. and co-pastor First Lady Kathy Butts. Amen. We have been dealing with the series um, of the kingdom of opposition. Amen. The kingdom of opposition. You can go with me to 1 John uh, chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 is where... Uh, we've been teaching from, uh, and he tells us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then he goes on to verse 17 and tells us, and the world passeth away. So if you put all of your hope, if you put all of your gamble on things of the world, it says, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that does the will of God abideth for ever he that does the will of God abideth forever love not the world neither the things that are in the world amen and if any man love the world we talked about this the love the of the Father is not in him. So we want to talk and continue our series about the kingdom of opposition. And I want to tell you, in this time that we're living in, uh, uh, we have to stand strong in the Lord. We have to stand strong. And we have to make sure uh, that we're anchored in him. I want to tell you that the devil is busy He's seeking whom he may devour. The devil is crafty and he's after us and he's after those things that gets our attention the most. All of us have something that we're not as strong as others in. And the enemy uses those things. He uses where we are weak at to try to stop us, to try to to hinder us. And this is why uh, the writer John, the disciple, says to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The things that are in the world. Amen. We know that Romans 8 and 6 says to uh, be worldly minded is to be carnal. Hallelujah. But to be spiritually minded is life eternal. So to be carnally minded is death. Amen. To be carnally minded, it brings about death. It brings about separation. It brings about uh, a complete separation between you and God. Amen. But to be spiritually minded is to be life everlasting. There's eternal life in being spiritually Minded. I want to also talk tonight because there's an enemy that is at work in our lives. There is a devil, 
Someone say that with me. There's a devil. There is a devil that is at work in our lives. One of his main goals, and I've come to expose them tonight, one of his main goals is to always try to take us back to where God has brought us from. It's to get us to backtrack. It's to get us to go back down memory lane and stay there. That is his job. And Ephesians 2, go there with me. Ephesians 2 and 2 uh, says, where in? Someone say where in. In time past. Understand that. I'm, I'm going to read it slow. In time past. So where in in time past, if it was time past, that means that the past should stay the past. That means that we shouldn't go back and dig up the past. We should not be influenced to go back and pick up things which we destroyed just to do them all over again. But what is the enemy's job? It's to get us to go back. So Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 2, he says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. What does that mean? The course of this world. That means that there is a way of the world and that there is a way of God. That means that there's two ways you can go. Either you can go in the right direction or you can go in the wrong and we know that Matthew says that the way is straight and narrow, but there are some that chooses to go a broader way. Amen. And the Bible tells us here that in times past, none of us were perfect. None of us was born with a golden spoon in our mouth. None of us uh, was born with a crown over our head. It said in time past, all of you, Paul speaks, all of you walked according to the course of the world. It was not the course of God. We were not walking according to the way of God, but we were walking according to our own selfish desires which is uh, with the world. And so here, according, Paul goes on to say it's not only the course of the world, but it is according to the prince of the power of the air. So that means that there is a devil at work through it all. He's a prince of the power of the air. And I've said it before, there are some folks that think the devil don't have no power. The devil does have power. He has influence if you allow him to. Matter of fact, at one point, we all walked according to his influence. We've all walked according to his dominion and according to his rule because he is the prince of the power of the air. It is that same spirit that identifies with disobedience. It's that same spirit that identifies with the children of disobedience. And you want to know why there's so much going on in the world? You want to know why there's so much wickedness? Why there's so much sin? Why the world love of its own? Why the world love of violence? The world love of wars? The world love of sin? Is because Satan is the prince of the air. Don't you be fooled. The devil is real. His power is real. But we serve a God who is greater. Why? Because greater is he. 1 John 4 and 4, that's within you than he that is in the world. Greater. Our God is greater 
than that of the prince of the air. So it says, we, we were all shaken. We were all influenced huh? in the course of this world by the prince of the air. This is why uh, John goes back and tells us to, to not be a lover of the world. Not to be a lover of the world. What do we mean when he says, love not the world? What does John mean here in the 15th verse of 1 John 2 and 15? Love not the world. John means to not to put all of your affection. You're putting all of your hope. All of your dedication. All of your loyalty in the things of the world. Be not mistaken. God said to love people. When we say love not the world, we don't mean uh, don't love people. Love people. But it's the systems of the world. It is the ways of the world. It's the philosophies. It's the way of thinking. It's the lifestyle uh, we're aiming for here. It's the lifestyle of the world that God said for us not to love. Not to commit to, not to dedicate ourselves to, but to reject that way. To reject the way of the world, nearly to basically hate it. And see, you don't, you don't stop doing anything. You're not delivered from anything until you first of all hate it. You got to first of all hate it. Because as long as you love it, you're going to keep doing it. Ain't that right? As long as you love it, you're going to stay in it, but not until you hate it. Huh? That's why some people get caught up in um, relationships, and they think they love that person, and they can't do without them. And not until that person do them wrong, then they learn how to let go because they hate the very thought of them. It is that idea that, that we're aiming for here that God says it's the way of the world that we got to hate. Things that we've got to get out of our system, things that we got to let go because it is influenced by the power of Satan, the prince of the air. See, we know, we know who your father is. We know who influences you. By what you love. Does that make sense to you all tonight? We know who is your influence by what you love. And so let me ask you something tonight. What is it that you love? Who is it that you love? Amen. James 4 and 4. James 4 and 4. I want y'all to pay close attention to this. Pay close attention. James 4 says, um, you adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Let's talk about that. He says, you adulterers and adulteresses. That means uh, he's talking to unfaithful believers. He's not talking to the world. Because he would, he would have never needed to say friendship with the world. But he's talking to unfaithful believers. Basically, church folks that were unfaithful. Adulterers and adulteresses. See, he didn't leave anybody out. He's talking to men and women. So often in the Bible, it's always talking to the masculine. But right now, it's talking to both. Adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world and how do we make friends with the world how do we make friends is that we get complacent in worldly matters we get complacent in the carnal mindset that 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 is how we become a friend of the world we we, we become complacent we become loyal to it see real friends are loyal and so to, to become a friend with the world, you become loyal to its system. You become loyal to its philosophy. 
You come loyal to its lifestyle. And James is talking to believers because it is very possible for you to love God, say you love God. It's very possible for you to profess Christ, to confess him as your Lord and Savior, but yet you have made a pact with the philosophy of the world. Let the church say amen. Amen. You have made a pact. You've got to understand as long as you are holding the bloodstained banner, as long as you are professing Christ and you saying that you saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, filled, fire, baptized, got a mind to run on to see what the end's going to be. As long as you are saying that, there's always an opposition that works against that. It's always an opposition that works against that to challenge you, to challenge that what you say, to challenge that what you believe. James says, uh, when you become friends with the world, you make yourself enmity with God. Oh, so that means the two don't mix. Enmity with God means that it's opposition with God. Means that uh, God can have it both ways. He won't have it both ways. Friendship with the world, that means that it's either you all in or you out. Huh? All in or you out. It says it's enmity with God. And so we have to make up a choice. We have to make up in our mind who is it that we want to live for? Who is it that we are going to serve? Amen. It's time out for everything else because everything in this world, as John said, is going to pass away. And the only thing that's going to be standing is God's word. And he says, enmity with God. That means they make themselves an enemy to God. Hallelujah. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to put myself to be an enemy with God to be an enemy to the Lord. And how do you make yourself an enemy to God? Is being unfaithful by making a loyal pact with the system and the values. Ooh, help us, God. The values, what the what the world values. You make a, a, a commitment to that value. See, our values as believers should not be the same values as the systems of the world. See, how we think, how we believe should not be the same. It should be a difference. And what I'm afraid of today is that we in Christendom and many believers are trying to have the same values as the world. When the worldly values are influenced by Satan, good God Almighty. When the worldly values are influenced by the prince of the air. And I'm afraid that we are trying to carry the same values, the same beliefs. And we're trying to be uh, uh, relevant with popular culture, with uh, secularism. We're trying to be relevant. We're trying to be cool. We're, we're trying not to offend. But sometimes this gospel becomes an offense. The name of Christ becomes 
in a fist, uh, an offense. And so to be loyal to that, to be friends with that, it says, is an enemy of God. Why is it an enemy of God? Because it works in direct opposition. It works against the standards of God. It works against the very values of holiness. Glory to God. It works against the standard of God's righteousness. But there has to be a difference between holy and unholy. Right and wrong. There has to be a difference between saved and unsaved. This is why God says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. Because you cannot have two. And you cannot have two masters. Either you're going to love the one, hate the other, or love the other and hate the one. And to hate is to reject. God says to reject the world, reject the lifestyle, to turn from it, resist the devil. And the word says, he will flee from you. But you got to resist him. Resist, resist the devil. Not run to him. Not go and chase him. Not go after him, but to resist him. And when you, when you resist him, you will find that he flees. Because that is what the word says. That is what the word of God declares. To resist the enemy. To resist the way of the world. To reject it. And it'll flee. First John 2 and 17. All, it said not some, but all that is in the world. All that's in the world. Passive away. Can I tell you tonight that don't spend a lifetime trying to build for this what's here and now. Don't spend your life trying to satisfy here and now. Because we know tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. It's no guarantee that you will be here. We're just pilgrims passing through this barren land. Glory to God. You don't know when your name is going to be called. And so the writer says, everything's going to pass away. Everything. The, the buildings you see is going to be destroyed. Everything you see is going to pass away. And even the lust. And so all of this is just temporal. And so we don't spend our life preaching about material things, teaching about materialism, preaching and teaching about I shall have, I shall get this, I shall get that. Those things are temporal. The most important thing that we need to be concerned about is our soul, is our life in Christ, is our life in God. What would, it, what would it, what would it, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Ooh, you see what I'm talking about? You see how important this is? What, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world, gain it all? The lust thereof, everything. What would it profit a man to gain it but then lose the soul? You worked a lifetime building for this life just to find out at the end that you lost your soul. What, what, what can, 
what can a man give in exchange for his soul? See, people can take everything from you. They can even take your life, but they can't take your soul. Because God has the final say-so on that. And these materials, the, the, uh, uh, the material things, the, the fleshly desires, the pride of life, even the lust of the eyes, all of that, the scriptures say, is going to pass away. And the only thing that we're going to have standing is the word of God. The word of God. And so that's why, that's why in the king, in opposition, we know that the devil is working and he's working quicker and faster now, more now than he's ever done before. He's working now. Because his assignment, his job is to hinder you. His job is to stop you. Stop you from serving God. Stop you from loving God. Stop you from worshiping. It, his job it, is to get you to put everything else before the Lord. Well, what, what am I saying? I'm saying, have you ever noticed how sometimes it looks like you're just too busy? You got this going on. You got that going on. You got everything going on. But when it comes to the kingdom, you cannot find the time. That is the enemy's job. It's to get us to put all of our effort into these things of this world. Put all of our effort into our jobs put all of our efforts into our personal desires until we have no more strength left for God's kingdom. And so I, I want to admonish and encourage you tonight to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, but to love God of all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. I want to talk to you that there's always opposition that is working against you. There's always opposition that is trying to discourage you, that's trying to hinder you, that's trying to stop you, that's trying to keep you from serving the Lord. But I want to encourage you tonight to continue to hold on, to hold on to the bloodstained banner, to continue to love God with all of you. All, Deuteronomy 6 and 5 says, love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you do those things, there will be no room for anything else, let's learn how to resist the devil. And if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Listen, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight, uh, watching on um, Facebook and you that's on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. And let somebody know what God is doing for you. Uh, here at New Heart Christian Center, New Heart Ministries. And listen, I want God to bless you, God to keep you, and certainly, certainly let heaven smile upon you.